Paul Catalina and Stephen Simcox. Um, and Stephen has a wheel topic for us. Wheel of Whimsy. Yes, the the Wednesday Wheel of Wednesday. On Are we Thursday. still in negotiations for a new part? Uh, yeah, uh, I I gotta I gotta refocus on that. I gotta I gotta check my. Uh, you got a lot going on. Yeah, football season, like a million podcasts and all that. So, yeah. All right. So, what's their wheel topic? We're doing. How impressed were you with Week One performances? Okay. On a scale of one to ten. Okay. So and, we'll, um, am I grading them individually? Like yes, grade them individually. Not so ranking, we're not ranking. Okay. Not ranking. All right, good deal. Okay. All right. So Georgia, thirty-four to three victory over Clemson. Very impressed. I'll give that one an, an eight. The only reason it's not a little bit higher is that Clemson I, has a lot of problems. They've got a lot of problems. Um, Dabo Sweeney's arrogance is. It's uh, we had Zach Gelb said this to us yesterday. Dabo Sweeney's arrogance is what got them there, but it's also what's gotten them here. You know, he's he's convinced that he's going to do it his way, and you know he just won't. And right. he's got to adapt. So Georgia was not playing Clemson at their best, so I'm going to knock it down. But to, to be so far ahead of, I mean, like the gap in in the high school recruiting is amazing like the talent that they have it's not just the transfers it's like the pound for pound talent that georgia has over clemson that just five years ago wasn't what was splitting hairs like they were they right. were the same it, it looks like a game that georgia would play against like a bad sec East school yeah that where was they probably could have put up 50 but they didn't they just yeah. sort of controlled the clock and and look uh clemson played played lights out on defense in the first half but Nobody's afraid of Kate Klubnick right now. Nobody's afraid of that offense. And especially a team like Georgia that's like, all right, well, we're just going to make him try to do stupid things. And and they did. And then they knew the defense eventually was going to pop because, you know, if you have no points, it's hard to it's hard to really, you know, get right. going. All right. So sticking with uh the ACC and teams that, you know, could, I guess take over Clemson if they continue to struggle Miami with a 41 17 win over Florida in the Paul Catalina bowl. <laughs> uh, very impressed with Miami. Uh, not so impressed with Florida, um, but I'll give that one. A, I'll give that one a seven and a half just because Florida's like even, even further down than I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and I didn't have high hopes uh, for them or high expectations. I don't have hopes for them at all. <laughs> you didn't have high expectations for them. I didn't have high expectations. There's no, there's no hopes <laughs> for either of those teams. My, my hopes my hopes are very low for both of them. I hope that they're both a disaster. That doesn't always happen, uh, and karma will get you, as I'm mm -hmm. living right now. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, uh, I was very impressed with Miami along the fronts. Uh, everything looks to have worked out for them. We'll see if they can sustain it. Like Miami's problem is not talent. Miami's problem is their coaching. Yeah. And Mario Cristobal has to go from being this elite recruiter to an elite developer and coach. And I, he's not quite there yet, but he might like, he might be able to do it with this crew because Cam Ward is pretty much already developed and they just need to like, let him go and be Cam Ward. Are they the ACC favorites? I would say right now they are. With that schedule, they have to be, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, their schedule is, is very favorable, too. Cam Ward is – so my in-laws were in town this weekend. Cam Ward's from my wife's, like, hometown. He's from West Columbia, Texas, which is southeast Texas. And they were all just shocked that, like – I mean, they're happy. They're really happy for him. But they were like, this is not the person that we watched <laughs> play football, like, seven years ago. I mean, yeah. he's, just, he's just completely different. Yeah. It's rare that you see somebody, like, take off like that once they get to yeah. college. Yeah. But he's figured it out. Um, okay. Big 12 wise, Oklahoma state 44 to 20 over South Dakota state in Stillwater. I mean, that's a five. They should have, you know, they did what they had to do. Ollie Gordon, all that South Dakota state, you know, showed a little gumption. I mean, they're the defending national champs in the SES and Jimmy Rogers is a fantastic coach who uh -huh. it's going to probably be the next Kalen DeBoer, but, um, yeah, I don't, uh, I mean, I can't like, can't be all that impressed with it. How impressed were you with uh, Colorado getting that victory against? I mean, I know it was a competitive game, but they do beat North Dakota State 31-26 last week. About a three. Really? About a three. I mean, you know, they 
they've not changed my perception of them at all. I think they look like a five and seven team right now where all five wins are going to come on the fact that they've got some really skilled players that yeah. at the skill positions, but their lines are not impressive. And I think that when you get into the, the teeth of the big 12, that's going to be mm-hmm. a lot like you got into the teeth of the, the pac 12 last year. And, and all those teams were better than you. And, you know, like they're going to scare some people and they're going to win some games by just scoring a lot early and putting the other team behind the eight ball. That's what I worry about. Like when they play Baylor in a couple weeks. Yeah. That could get weird. Like that, like if they get out in front of Baylor, I'm not sure Baylor has the ability to, you know, like come back. But if Baylor can go there and hang with them and, you know, cause some turnovers and create some problems, you know, like they're, they're, it's, it's a high school offense. Garrett said it. RJ Young said that yep. I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm watching it and seeing like, yeah, it's a high school offense. And I don't, I don't think it's sustainable. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's not even a high school defense right now. Penn state beating West Virginia 34 to 12. Very impressed. Well, it's like a nine hour that, game. That's yeah. like a 9.8. I was very impressed with them. Penn state looked a lot different than me, to me uh, than they did last year. They looked, they were bigger, stronger, faster, better in every single regard than West Virginia who, as you know, last week I doubled down on West Virginia saying that they would, they would win the game. And mm-hmm. I was very wrong. Off of the cap to you, James Franklin. Uh, Notre Dame beating Texas A&M on the road, 23-13. Seven. Uh, I think their offense needs to be a little bit better. Uh, but again, AM's defense is really good. Mike Elko's a defensive genius. Marcus Freeman's a defensive genius. That game went exactly how both of them wanted it to go until until Notre Dame had the long touchdown. Then then it that was what's gonna happen. Like whoever broke the one long offensive play was gonna win the game. And it was Notre Dame, you know. Yeah. And they did it late and they won the game. But I was very impressed. I was impressed with most of what AM was doing, except for Connor Wigman, who had a really rough night. And I'm curious to see when he plays against a defensive coordinator uh, in the SEC that's maybe not as good as Marcus Freeman is at Notre Dame and what he can do, but he he exposed a lot of weaknesses. And I don't know if he – I don't know if he uh, – I mean, he just hadn't played that much, really. So this – actually, think about how he got hurt a year ago, um, and they, they wound up losing to Miami. Uh, after he got hurt in that game. Right. But when he was playing, they were doing well. But Miami wasn't that good last year. I don't think he's ever played a team like Notre Dame. So that's his first game against a really good team. So I, I mean, he got hurt really early in the year. Yeah, I'm shocked. I mean, like, I know college football fans are like this, but is anybody else shocked that they've just jumped off the Connor Wegman bandwagon so fast? No, it's College Station, Texas. It's exactly yeah. what exactly what they do. I can I can give you a long history of quarterbacks that they loved and then all of a sudden didn't love anymore. Yeah. You know, Gerard Johnson, Ryan Tannehill, Stephen McGee. I was about to say McGee. <laughs> Reggie, Cowboys, Reggie Cowboys McNeil. Legend, Stephen McGee. Reggie McNeil. Um I mean, uh I mean, like honestly, the only two quarterbacks I can think of loved from beginning to end by AM fans are Johnny Manziel and Bucky Richardson. That's it. Bucky Richardson could kill a guy in College Station, and they, like, they'd be like, well, what do you say to Bucky? What about Kubiak? Would he fall in that? I, don't, I wasn't, I, like, I was so little, um, you know. Yeah, you have a I don't really have a recollection of it. Nobody, and nobody talks about Gary Kubiak. I know, he's kind of long. No, he's right long ago, but, like, he's. Oh, he's talking about his coach. Yeah, he's, like, the third or fourth best quarterback yeah. in their history, so. You know, uh, how surprised, or I guess, how impressed or concerned were you with Arizona giving up 39 points to New Mexico? They did win 61. That defense has got to get better. Uh, very impressed. Like, I'm, I'm like 10 impressed with the offense and four impressed with the mm-hmm. defense. So let's split the difference on that. Uh, but Tedero, McMillan, and Noah Fafita are, are problems. Yeah, they're okay. problems. Okay. Uh, you talked about them in the last segment. Texas blanking Colorado State 52 nothing. I mean, I'm not impressed with them pitching a shutout against Colorado State, although Torrey Horton is a receiver there, and I thought he would at least, like, get a couple. They they completely shut him down. Um, he's a really good player. Um, but I'm, I'm impressed that they did it 
they did it without looking sloppy. They did look like it wasn't like one of those things where sometimes you can have a 50, like you can have a 52, nothing win that, that like masks a lot of your issues because mm-hmm. the team you're playing a team that's just so far down below you athletically, but no, they looked like they're, that was a prepared team ready to go. They didn't make mistakes. They didn't, they didn't take stupid chances. They didn't, there weren't plays in that game that like you watch and like, Oh, Colorado state should have had that. And they didn't, it was like, no, Texas just rolled through them. So yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll be, I, I probably feel like I'm, I'm going to be a 10 impressed with Texas next week because I think they're going to go in and shred Michigan. All right. We got a little bit of time here. Let's see some watchability rankings for this week or right, just one to 10 Oklahoma state and Arkansas, Paul seven, seven. Yeah. I mean, that's exciting. I, I mean, I could get out of hand with the, if they can't stop the run, but I, I think, you know, I think that it's a big game for Sam Pittman. It's, mm-hmm. it's important for him to go in and beat a ranked team. Baylor, Utah, two thirty start in Salt Lake city. I think that one will be about an eight. I, I really do. I think Baylor's going to, you know, take some chances, sling the rock around, let Daquan Finn get loose. They've got to, because if, if they allow Utah to play their game, then it's going to be tough, but they really hung with Utah last year. You know, now Cam rising wasn't there and Brent right. Keith, he wasn't there. So I, I don't know how much we can put into last year. Now Emory's picked them to win. Really? What? Bro. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they played him really tough last year. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, I, I think, I think being on the road is just going to be tough. Yeah. Rice Eccles. Baylor's historically not good on the road. I mean, name it's a bad. coach. Not good on the road. <laughs> there you uh, go. Yeah. As he's rocking the Colorado pullover. <laughs> yeah. Cyhawk uh, game. Iowa, Iowa State. Oh, probably about a seven. Maybe a six. I don't know. Like, it should be better offensively, but I have no, like, this game's always hard to watch. Yeah. Honestly, like, it's, it's like, a, like, I don't know. I don't want to use that analogy. People are going to take it wrong, but do you ever watch 30 rock? Yes. You know, the, uh, like when Tracy went and he got it, the movie he, he got the Oscar for was called hard to watch. <laughs> that's what that is. Yeah. It's a rock <laughs> fight. I mean, that's what yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kansas and Illinois. I'm going to say a seven on that one. Uh, Illinois has got a sellout crowd. I think Kansas will take it to them, but I, I, at least I think Illinois is going to be in there for a fight. Right. And then Michigan and Texas 10. Absolutely. I mean, it's a great team against the, uh, in Texas is going to be really good against the defending national champions who are, um, a shell of themselves, at least on offense, uh, from a year ago. And, you know, um, but I, I think it still will be formidable, formidable and fun yeah. to why. I mean, like Michigan's defense, isn't just going to yeah, be like, Oh, hum, we know our, we don't have, we don't have two great quarterbacks, you know, that, well, I don't know. I don't know if Arch is great yet, but like, we don't have two quarterbacks that we can, you know, roll out there and win this game with. We don't, we didn't even know like what we're doing here really. So uh, yeah, they don't have four wide receivers that are all studs. They don't, they didn't lose, you know, maybe that like, Honestly, the most talented tight end in Texas history. Like, you can argue with me on Jermichael Finley, yeah. But Jatavian Sanders, Jermichael Finley, to me would be one and one A, you know, for that. And then they were just replacing with a guy who's super athletic and Amari Niblack, and it's kind of the same thing. Although we didn't see him a whole lot, whole whole lot last week, but I, I think that in this game in particular, Amari Niblack is going to be a factor because you're going to have to like, you're going to have to use your big guys a little bit more because Michigan's huge, uh-huh. so. I, I expect to see Amari Niblack, but this is one of the things that I talked about with Michigan last year, and they did a good job with Washington uh, where they, they roughed them up. But I wondered if the skill players on teams like this would be too much for them. I think the skill players now are too much for them. Uh, Texas hasn't missed a beat. You know, you, you lose Adonai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy and Jatavian Sanders, and you just kind of, hit refresh and there's Isaiah bond and Matthew golden and John Tay cook and nib black and I'm uh, Silas Bolden's there now too. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I think they could come out of it in waves. It's one of the reasons I thought that FSU could, could hang with Michigan if they had played them because Michigan had not played a team with a quarterback like Jordan Travis and had Jordan Travis been there like mm-hmm. the whole season. I'm like, I think they could match up well with Michigan. It's a reason that I thought that, 
them in Texas or them in Washington would all have been ridiculous shootouts. Even as good as all three of those defenses were, I would think it would have tilted toward shootout. I thought they could have maybe hung with Michigan. I thought Texas could have hung with Michigan too for that same reason. And I was surprised that Washington didn't do better, but part of it was because they just beat the crap out of Michael Penix. But right. um, so, um, but yeah, I think, I think Texas is, is going to show out. I really do. 